The series end is up in the air as far as I'm aware. However, this chapter delivered the utmost satisfaction that I don't mind if it does or not. It can abruptly end here and I'll still be satisfied. That's pushing it too far. It needs a rewarding conclusion for a fan's commitment. While there's more than a rewarding development, there's also a slow revenge in motion that can and perhaps will ultimately lead to humanity's victory. I can't tell you how much I love the beginning part of the chapter. Granted, I am reviewing it, but it's one you have to read and feel the sensation be part of the emotional roller coaster. In other words, I can't do it justice by simply telling you. The beginning focuses on Nezuko walking towards the battlefield, but the real highlight is the slow transcending back to humanity. The dialogue is very minimum, really close to be completely silent aside from heavy breathing. It's clear from the start that Nezuko is slowly regaining her human conscience, remembering her childhood. It sadly goes to the darkest time, the moment when she lost her family. It's already said Muzan himself murdered them. However, what wasn't said is why them. In fact, it's yet to be revealed exactly. What's revealed is that Muzan was testing his injection of certain amount of blood to create a demon who can withstand the sun. Maybe it's a coincidence, I'm not sure. One thing was certain, he was wrong once again, just like the blue spider lily. The memory angers Nezuko as if she's reverting back to the complete demon. That's when the emotional roller coaster begins. She stops and recalls the time after the tragedy. Tanjiro saved her life, and the rest is history. Panel by panel, it is sheer tears inducing. And I don't only mean Nezuko's tears, it's her point of view and how she fondly remembers the journey since chapter 1 from confronting Giyu to meeting Zenitsu and Inosuke. It brings her down to her knees, overwhelmed by cherished memories. It continues on to her days at Demon Slayer Corpse to Butterfly Estate. Shinobu was actually nice to her, despite of her status, treated her like a person. It's true what they say, we're just here to suffer, one way or another. It's seriously sad to see panels with characters that are no longer with them, including Genya and Tokito. Their purity can never be replicated. Nezuko gets back up and sees Tanjo in her vision, holding out his hand. A sibling bond is the final nail to the coffin, and in it is demonic. Nothing can break them apart. After all these years, Nezuko has recovered her humanity. End of series. The chapter could end right here, and I would be fine with it. It already passed 10 pages, so no harm, no foul. Much like the animated film Up, this standalone scene is pleasing enough. Could you imagine the animation? Tears will overflow your room. If it takes place in theaters, the employees would think Titanic made a comeback. In all seriousness, aside from already satisfied with his content, there's more stuff to cover. And it's rewarding in his own right. Tanjiro and Iguro are still the only one carrying the battle while Muzan is slowing down. The good news keep on rolling for Demon Slayer Corpse with the update on the pillars. They're being treated as Muzan continues to struggle. It's only a matter of time for some, if not all, to return and give him an educational beatdown. The lesson will be, don't screw with them. I like the acknowledgement from Muzan towards them for two reasons. The first is establishing the idea that everyone has a contribution towards this outcome. It didn't hinder their work effort or pedestal Tanjiro, the protagonist. Remember, all of them could have legit died if Tamayo didn't create antidote. Not to mention, there were so many times one or more escaped death thanks to teamwork. Which brings me to the second reason. Teamwork. Yes, it is similar to the first. However, I want to address on how it didn't flat out say friendship power. The problem that shonen tend to have is friendship is presented as show don't tell, meaning they can scream out loud and it will automatically make them stronger. 
that or say their feelings of friendship is too strong to die. At last, the power of love here is very convincing and stay true to the core of the genre. Plus, it has a nice way to describe with the image of a dragon. Muzan is officially done with the battle. I know in the last chapter, he was already running away, but this time, he is committed to escape. They only have 35 minutes until dawn, so they just have to keep on pressing. But Muzan won't have it, and so his arm begins to expand. Thank goodness for Tanjiro recollecting Yorochi's backstory, because it's the same thing. Which means Muzan will explode into pieces. It means they're screwed. Yorochi was a god, and he couldn't destroy all pieces. What makes you think the two can? Just before fans say sequel inbound, something goes wrong. The sequence fooled the fans into believing either Tanjo succeed on stopping or fail. Instead, Muzan has failed to divide. All thanks to Tamayo's drug. Yes, it didn't stop at aging. It goes to another substance. Divide prevention. Surely that's all to it, right? This calls for Tamayo to make her return to reveal the truth of the drug. If her last scene wasn't satisfying enough, this will easily take the cake. There are four substances in the drug. The last one is cell destruction. Keep in mind, the last time we saw her, she only told Muzan to look over and see for himself. She never confirmed the number of effects, so this is all on him. That way, it doesn't feel hokey like she keeps on revealing one after another. Plus, it's great to see how much prepared she was. If she didn't witness the dividing technique, he could have escaped here. She steps in now because it's the perfect time to watch him suffer, slowly succumb to death. My goodness, her revenge is terrifyingly sweet. I got chills from the last panel alone. This put a smile on my face. Whether it's sadistic or not, Muzan had it coming, and deservedly so. What a sweet revenge and rewarding chapter. The entire Nezuko scene was glorious enough to be a chapter alone. I couldn't do justice here, but when you read it, you'll know it. The rest was satisfying in its own right. The contribution from all fronts won't go in vain. Arguably, Tamayo did the most damage with that drug. Without it, well, the series would have ended earlier. I still don't know how this will end, but my interest remains strong. Take us to the end. We're almost there. Man, that was doing for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm terribly sorry for the late review. It's been pretty damn busy on my end. I'll do my best next time. What do you think of this chapter? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.